University of Salford and the University of Poitiers have developed a PhD programme in which the students will study in both England and in France. Dr Amy Gandhi, who graduated in the summer, came in to tell us about it. Donc, je ne sais pas si tu te souviens comment on peut imager les ah, bulles oui. ou euh, non Donc effectivement ici, pour les apercevoir, il faut savoir qu'elles sont toutes petites ici. On les crée à fond de l'ordre de, de nanomètres. Mm -hmm. Donc on a, été, on a dû grossir à 200 000, grosso modo 200 000 fois. The broad subject of my PhD research was to use a microscope called a transmission electron microscope to look at certain defects um, in silicon. Now silicon is found in everyday household products like um, mobile phones and computers and it's, it's what makes up the microchips in the computers. Mobile phones and computers and other electronic devices um, are getting smaller and smaller and are working faster and can do more complicated operations. Now 10 years ago my mobile phone was just a mobile phone, I just used it to calling people. But now you can do all sorts of things with your mobile phone. You can go on the internet, you can send and receive emails, you can play games, you can even watch television on, on your mobile phone now. And the advancement in this technology is because of the continued miniaturisation of the components that make up your computer or your mobile phone. There are, however, technical problems associated with miniaturisation. Each component um, is connected uh, via um, a metal connection. And what happens is atoms from those metal connections can actually move through the device uh, and into a very special area of the device known as the active region. And if that happens, it can have severe detrimental effects to the device and stop your mobile phone or your laptop from working. The proposal um, in my PhD research project was to come up with a strategy to deal with these metal impurities. What we did was to implant the silicon with an inert gas, creating bubbles very similar to those that you'd find in a bar of aero. The metal atoms, if they move through the silicon, will encounter these bubbles and get trapped inside them, thus stopping them from having a detrimental effect on the devices. Even though an electron microscope looks like a very complicated piece of equipment, it's actually very similar to a light microscope. In a light microscope, light from a light source like a bulb is focused using um, lenses um, onto a sample. The light is then bounced off the sample and collected and you can produce an a magnified image of the surface of the sample. In a transmission electron microscope, it's very similar, but instead of using a light source, you use a beam of electrons, and the electrons are then focused onto a sample using magnetic lenses. So if you think of a light microscope and turn it upside down, you can then see the similarities between a light microscope and an electron microscope. You have a source of electrons, or light, in the case of the light microscope. The electrons, or the, the light, is then focused using a set of condenser lenses. You then have an area where the specimen is, where the light or the electrons are focused onto the specimen. You then have an objective lens which focuses the electrons or the, the light after they've interacted with the specimen in some way. And then following that you have the eyepiece where you can see the final image. I've just done a PhD in physics, but what was special about it is I did a joint PhD with the French University. So I spent a year over in France studying for my PhD, and I'm actually the first person in England who's enrolled on such a course. The final research award is a joint award of Doctor of Philosophy between the University of Salford and the University of Poitiers in France. The recipient is one of the first students in England to graduate under this Anglo-French cooperation, and I'm delighted that Dr Jacques Chevalier, scientific counsellor to the French Embassy and the principal architect of the scheme, is able to be present at today's ceremony. On behalf of the Institute for Materials Research and FEMA, I present for the award of joint Doctor of Philosophy, Amy Sarah Gandhi. Les avantages pour Amy d'avoir fait sa co-tutelle de thèse en collaboration avec les deux universités, c'est donc de pouvoir travailler dans deux laboratoires différents, d'utiliser en fait les facilités des deux laboratoires et de pouvoir aussi euh, bénéficier d'une autre culture hein, et d'avoir une culture dans les di différents pays et de pouvoir aussi euh, euh, parler la langue française. Alors les avantages, donc ça permet en fait aux universités d'avoir une collaboration scientifique et donc ce qui est en fait très intéressant au niveau de l'Union européenne 
Et par ailleurs, ça permet de montrer aux autres étudiants qu'il est possible en fait, d'étudier dans différents pays. Alors au niveau des difficultés pour les étudiants, effectivement, il y en a particulièrement une au départ qui dure environ, je dirais, trois mois, c'est le problème de la langue. Donc, euh, en fait, ce problème de la langue, il est euh, relativement euh, faible au début parce qu'il est possible de parler anglais, même dans d'autres euh, labos européens. Et puis, au, au fil du temps, je dirais, au bout de quatre mois, l'étudiant commence à, se, à parler français, je dirais pas couramment, mais bon, à s'exprimer relativement bien en français. À la fin de son stage en France, Amy parlait quasiment couramment en français. Pour nous, euh, notre tutelle de thèse donc c'était dans le domaine scientifique mais en fait ça peut marcher dans n'importe quel autre domaine alors effectivement cette cotunelle a fini par, euh, par se réaliser et en, grâce à l'aide de Jacques Chevalier qui, est le, qui était le conseiller scientifique euh, de l'ambassade de France à Londres la mise en place de cette cotutelle de thèse a demandé beaucoup de temps, d'une part parce que la bureaucratie en France est très compliquée, et d'autre part parce que la bureaucratie en Angleterre est également très compliquée.